Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of iCar Training, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of the ICAR and just examination. Today, we're going to be looking at some questions of chemistry and biology, and we'll be looking at how to solve these questions effectively. So let's start off, shall we? Here's our first question, and this one's from biology. This question has two statements, and we need to find out the most appropriate answer from the options given. Let's look at the two statements. In fermentation, there is a net gain of 12 molecules of ATP for each molecule of glucose degraded to pyruvic acid, whereas only two molecules of ATP are generated under aerobic conditions. So, um, is this statement true or false? Fermentation is a form of anaerobic respiration, and in anaerobic respiration, the number of ATP molecules are less. So therefore, there, there's only a gain of two molecules and not 12. And for aerobic conditions, since there is a complete breakdown of the carbohydrate into carbon dioxide and water, there are more number of molecules of ATP generated. So therefore, the first statement is incorrect. Now, among the options, you can see that options A and C are incorrect because both of them say that statement 1 is correct, whereas in fact, statement 1 is wrong. Now we will look at statement 2 in order to make sure which of the two remaining options is the correct one. Fermentation accounts for only a partial breakdown of glucose, whereas in aerobic respiration, it's completely degraded to carbon dioxide and water. Now, in fermentation, there's carbon dioxide and water forming, but there is another byproduct as well, which is ethanol. So therefore, it only has a partial breakdown. In aerobic respiration, since there's more number of ATP molecules generated, the glucose molecules that are present is completely degraded to carbon dioxide and water. So therefore, op statement number two is the correct statement. So therefore, since statement one is wrong and statement two is correct, the right option turns out to be option D, which says statement one is incorrect, but statement two is correct. Option B is incorrect because it says that both statements are incorrect, which is not true. It turns out that statement number two is actually true. Now, for, the, for this first question, the right answer is option D. So let's look at another question. Again, this is a statement type question. We need to find out which of the two statements are correct. Now. Let's look at the first statement. The first five reactions of the glycolytic pathway convert a molecule of glucose into two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This statement is in fact true. So therefore, since statement one is correct, we can assume that options B and D are incorrect. Because in both options B and D, they say that statement one is not true, it's wrong, whereas in fact it's actually correct. Now let's look at statement number two. It says the final product of glycolysis is pyruvate in aerobic settings and lactate in anaerobic settings. Now in anaerobic conditions such as the one that the muscles endure um, during intense fitness, we find that lactic acid or lactate is formed in the muscles and that causes pain. So therefore this statement Statement number two is a correct statement. So therefore, we can see that since both statements are correct, the right option is option A. Option C is incorrect because it says that statement two is incorrect, whereas in fact it's not. So therefore, options, I mean statements one and two are correct, and that makes option A the right answer. Now let's look at some questions of chemistry. Now over here we're asked to select the false statement for valine. 
Now, valine is an amino acid, which is the building block for proteins. So there are 20 types of amino acids, and valine is one of them. We need to find out which of these statements is false. The first statement says that it has an isopropyl group as a side chain. The second statement says that it exists as a dipolar ion. The third statement says that it's a non-essential amino acid. Option D says that it's an optically active compound. So, which of these are false? Well, let's look at a structure for valin. Now, in valin, you have the central carbon atom connected to a carboxylic acid group and an amine group, as is the requirement for being an amino acid. You also have a hydrogen group, but on the left-hand side, you can see that there, are, there is a carbon chain group with three carbon atoms. However, one of the carbon atom branches off into two other carbon atoms. So this is basically what we call an isopropyl group. So therefore, option A is actually a true statement. So that means option A is incorrect. What about option B? It exists as a dipolar ion in water. Again, this is a true statement with respect to most amino acids. The reason being that you have an amine group and a carboxylic group, so therefore they exhibit opposite charges, and that's why it exists as a dipolar ion. So option B is also incorrect. What about option D? It is an optically active compound. Now what does optically active mean? Optically active means that it's not symmetrical. So, in optically active, you can see that it, uh, light passing through it undergoes some changes. So, therefore, option D is, again, a true statement. So, since it, there is a huge carboxylic chain, isopropyl chain here, so, therefore, it, it is an opt optically active compound. So, therefore, option D is a true statement, which makes it incorrect. The right answer is option C. It's a non-essential amino acid. Now, we've said that there are 20 amino acids. However, there are 9 which are essential to the human body and 11 which are non-essential. These 11 amino acids can be produced inside the body. However, these 9 essential amino acids have to be ingested and absorbed from food. So therefore, uh, since they, they have to be ingested because they cannot be created inside the body, they are called essential. And valine is one of the essential amino acids. So therefore, valine being called a non-essential amino acid is a false statement. And therefore, since we're looking at, for the false statement, option C is the right option. Now let's look at our final question. This is an assertion reason question. We have two statements, one of which is labeled as the assertion, and the other is labeled as the reason. Now, the assertion is acetic acid is more acidic than phenol, the reason being acetate ion is more stable than phenoxide ion. So, we need to find the most appropriate answer. Now, in assertion reason type questions, uh, there are four options. One of the options would say both, uh, both statements are correct, and the second statement explains the first one. Another option would be both A and R are correct, but R is not the correct explanation of A. Now, option C might say A is correct, but R is not correct. And in some cases, D would be both are incorrect, or in other cases like this one, it says that the assertion is incorrect, but the reason is correct. So now that we know how an assertion reason question works, let's look at each of the statements. Assert the assertion says that acetic acid is more acidic than phenol. This is a true statement. Now, when it comes to acidity of uh, you know, when it comes to acidity of acids, the first, when it comes to the highest, in when it comes to acidity, are sulfonic acids. And right behind them, you have carboxylic acids. Now, when it comes to organic acids, acetic acid, also known as vinegar, is of the formula CH3COOH. Now, the COOH functional group classifies it as a carboxylic acid. 
So therefore, we can definitely say that it is more acidic than phenol. Phenol lies somewhere below. So phenol, which looks like this, is actually less acidic than acetic acid. Okay, that's great. Now let's look at the reason. The reason is given that acetate ion is more stable than the phenoxide ion. Well, this statement is also true because the acid the acidity con the acid concentration for acetate ion is actually much greater than the Ka for phenol. Now Ka stands for acid dissociation, so therefore the acid dissociation is mo more in um, acetate ions than in phenol phenoxide ion. So that's why acetate ion is more stable. That's one of the reasons. And the same reason can also be used to you know, make the assertion that acetic acid is more acidic than phenol. So we know that both the assertion and the reason are true statements. But does the reason, you know, explain the assertion? Is acetic acid more acidic than phenol because the acetate ion is more stable than the phenoxide ion? If you look at it critically, it's not. Because both the assertion and the reason are explained by a third statement, and it does not imply that all acids, which are more acidic than others, would have more stable ions. For many kinds of organic acid, the, their acidity may be higher. However, that does not mean they're more stable. So therefore, the right option in this case is option B, where both the statements are correct, but R isn't the correct explanation of A. So option A, C, and D are incorrect, because in, both, in C and D, they sta say that one of the two statements is wrong, which is not true. And in option A, it says that R is the correct explanation of A, but we cannot find one. So therefore, option B turns out to be the right option. Now that concludes this episode of ICAR training. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. If you want to get the latest updates from ICAR or or, or our other, you know, examinations, then please don't forget to hit the bell icon present below the video. So until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.